Welcome back to Texas Truck Channel. I'm Brian. I'm Craig. And I'm freaking excited the Ranger Raptor is fi finally in our hands. I have personally had interest in this like crazy since it was even teen. And since the rest of the world had a diesel version of this for like more than a year, I've been a little sad about it. But we have it now. Good news is we have the Monroni in our hands and this thing is freaking sweet. 2024 Super Crew, three liter EcoBoost with a 10 speed auto, which is these days real good. The Raptor package comes with everything. So there's not a lot in the op option sheet. We have a 495 option for the red pepper, red metallic tint clear coat. And then on top of that, you've got bed liner spray in. That's it. With destination that brings you to 58055. That's not terrible. Miles per gallon. According to the feds, it's 17 mix, 16 city, 18 highway. Got that all out of the way. Have you ever driven a Raptor that wasn't amazing? No. Me neither. Have you ever driven a Raptor that was bad? No. Me neither. High hopes for this thing. Mechanically, is basically a Bronco Raptor, which we personally feel is the most capable off-roader ever made from a manufacturer, from an OEM. The only difference mechanically is this has 33s instead of 37s which makes it faster. I'm okay with that. That's a trade-off I'm worth having because the 37s, while if you live in the desert, is really helpful. On the daily drive, this might be more fun. That's all I'm saying. You, 33s are a lot. All right, come to the nose. It's got the plentiful Ford badging, which goes back to 2010 on the first gen F-150 Raptor. They've made it fit this nose, and I think it wears it quite well. Even the D on this Ford, like it looks like it carries to the edge. It's kind of just a cool design. Headlights are really nice. They actually have performance LED, and you do have a good C-clamp halo design around it. That's a signature Ford thing these days. Coming on down, fog lights down below that are not integrated in the light, and I prefer that. That's a pretty nice thing. In the middle, you have proper tow hooks, just like the Cheap Ranger has. They all freaking have that. I like that. This is plastic. That's metal. So the leading edge is plastic. Not crazy about that. The bottom edge is very beefy metal. metal. And I've had a personal, we've owned wrappers for the show, Craig. That thing can take a beating. I can tell you that for sure. All right, come on around before we get hit the ground. We've got heat extracting vents on the hood right here. These are, they appear to be functional. We'll see when we pop the hood in a minute and tell you. Same thing goes for this. I'm seeing light through there, so who knows. Coming on down, you've got traditional Raptor fender flares that are bigger, they're wider, and this is meant to keep brush and stuff off the truck. This truck's narrow enough, you can hit Jeep trails with it. So that's pretty cool. I like that a lot, that's a big plus. Wheel and tire. This is a traditional Ford multi-spoke design. We've seen this kind of design language before on lots of different Ford products. These are 285 7017 KO3s. In fact, it's the exact same tire we have on our personal Tacoma. So far, so good, I can tell you. Just from experience, great tire. So coming to the suspension, you have a cast aluminum upper A-arm, which is strong. It's a short long arm suspension design. It has two and a half inch, live valves and if you don't know what that means that means they can change based on ride height and g meters there's a g meter in each corner of the truck to show g front and rear and side to side and what that does is it allows to adapt it like one bazillion times a second and we've used a live valve on both the big raptor and the bronco raptor off-road on-road drifting straight line highway it is one of the best suspensions on the market bar none the end real big fan of that might be the best thing about this truck come on down you've got traditional raptor style steps they are not rock rails but they are bed lined and they are up high and out of the way these are mud catchers that's what these are <laughs> if you drive a raptor and you've got a ko tire it's going to fling mud like crazy and this will be a shelf of mud but it looks so cool and it makes sense the real bit of it is because of these holes it's designed to not hold sand if you're doing desert stuff that's really what it's meant for this is not really a mud truck we just happen to do that bam you know it's a Raptor, baby. You got the decal to prove it, and that's what you're really paying for. Big fan of that. Coming around to the back, we have a big, broad tailgate. The logo is black, not blue. I think that's pretty cool. And you've got Ranger and Boss, like all of them, but the Raptor decal up here. More importantly, coming down, we have tow hooks. These look strong enough to lift a helicopter. Not to be lifted by one, but to lift one. That's what this thing's for, because it's going to jump so high. Real metal tailpipes with adaptable exhaust. I'm going to walk through the different sounds right now. Okay, I started that in quiet mode. That was the first rev, and the last one was Baja mode. It goes from quiet, don't wake your neighbors up, normal, sport, and then Baja. What does it sound like, Craig? Meh. About the same inside. Let's see what the motor is up front. All right, coming up front, let's see where the juice is at. This is a three liter nano architecture twin turbo V6. You've seen this in 2.7 form in lots of different vehicles. The three liter is exclusive to the Bronco Raptor, this, and a couple Lincoln products because they want a little more power. 
It's good for 405 horsepower, 430 foot pounds of torque. It's paired to the excellent 10 speed automatic. And I gotta say, the Raptor products with the 10 speed are just more dialed than the XLT equivalents. We've driven this with the F 150, we've seen that. With what we're driving today, we've seen that. They just got a little more aggression in there. Really fine tuned. I like the programming on that a lot. Drivetrain wise, here's what's special about the Ranger in particular. For the first time in the truck lineup, you get a front locker. That's a huge deal. It's not just in the rear. It's not just a locking center transfer case. Like Land Cruisers are so excited about that. You get a four auto in the middle. You get a four high, four low locking in the middle and a locking front and locking rear. You can lock whatever the hell you want and they're independent, which is awesome. You get a lot of choice with this. I like that a lot. Let's hit up the interior with Craig. Before we go any further, I want to thank our buddies at Schottenkirk Ford in Granbury, Texas. Without them, we couldn't do reviews like this. The simple matter of the fact is the Ford Press Fleet doesn't have this truck available for us yet. They helped us out down there. We've worked with them for years and they've been very supportive of the show. And if you would like to get something from them, hit up Charles Brockman. He's our guy over there. His contact info is below. On to the review. All right, Brian, let's check out the interior and all the goodies with the Ranger Raptor. Interesting note here compared to the XLT, and I don't know if it's an option available on the Raptor, maybe not because of the exhaust. You don't get a sidestep there. Oh, no, that's true. So we haven't had time to look it up yet, but I'm sure you all let us know in the comments below. Right. It does have a lockable tailgate, but because it's got a proximity sensor, I can't really lock it standing next to it. You got the key on me. Let's see if it's dampened. And it is like all the other Rangers. Of course, of course. it is. Oh, bro, we do get measurements. Yes, in case you need a measure or tell your wife exactly how many two inches is. That's right there. <laughs> okay. And then you get a spot to put, uh, you know, a C clamp or whatever. And Brian, on the side, you don't get the bottle openers like other Ford products. Wait Interesting a minute. Interesting that that's not on there. That's actually a proper fail for the off-road community. Agreed. Okay. All right, to the bed. Let's get inside here to see if we get any more goodies because we got a three liter turbo, twin turbo V6. We get 400 watts, 120 volts, and then 180 watts, 12 volt, you know, for when you're doing your laptop and uh, social media surfing in the back of the bed and the wrapper. That's where you're working from home. Ryan, let's check this out. Back here in the back, we have a non-padded door seal and we have a nice padded arm rest with the traditional Ford pull uh, handle opener. Love that a lot. It's kind of integrated. I've had other people get in these Fords that had never been a Ford before. And like, where's the door handle? Where's the door handle? Where's the door handle? It's too simplistic. So simple they miss it. Yep. And then you got a nice bottle holder down here in the bottom of the door. Let's hold a little handle and flip it up and it doesn't split and you get some storage. That could be better. Could be better. Uh, the back of the seat does fold down. There's a little pull, and you can fold this flat. Look at that subwoofer. And there's a subwoofer integrated. Very interesting. But that could come in handy for doing some overlanding. Nice to know that that's there. Let's get in now and see if it's comfortable. Brian, we got some nice pleather, and mm -hmm. um, I'm sitting behind a six foot four man. Mm -hmm. I hit here because he got a bolstered seat, but it does have room for me to put my knee in between there. That's kind of nice. It's honestly not that bad. Yeah. We got map pockets on both sides because you're the Raptor, baby. You're going to be in a lot of mapping. Double navigation. No rear AC. Wish we had that. You would think, even at least in the Raptor, you would get that because you get that in overseas Rangers but not in the US. I don't get that. Uh, 400 watts back here, USB-C, USB-A. Brian, do you fit? So this speed office go up more, and the headroom is much like the Ranger XLT. It's enough, it passes, but the back of my head's kind of hitting this tapered line. Mm. Whatever, it works in a pinch. I would definitely go to dinner. I do not want to ride back here going to Houston. All right, Brian, let's check out the front of the Ranger Raptor, but before we get there, let's check out payload. Because Brian, usually specific off-road tuned vehicles don't have much payload because right. the suspension's softer. 1,360 pounds, that is more than our TRD off-road. Unbelievable. That's um, a lot. So that's really good for a, an off-road specific vehicle like this. That's actually kind of crazy. That's solid, yeah. Let's check out the door seal, Brian. It's padded up here, baby. In Alcantara. In fake Alcantara, yes. Yeah. Uh, just to go along with the fake leather. And the fake leather, it continues down at the armrest, which is actually padded quite well. Yep. With a nice four door pulls the way it should work. And a bottle opener down there for your Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper, if you're looking for a sponsor, hook us, uh, hit us up. All right, let's get in the actual seat and check it out. Brian, this is actually uh, not bad at all. I will say, Brian, one of the biggest differences between uh, this Ranger and some other Rangers is this. Yeah. The shifter is different. Your thoughts? Um. Not necessary. Agreed. There's yeah. a traditional shifter in the Ranger XLT. It just works better. Why can't we just get that in the Ranger Raptor? I don't know. That so, said, so show them how it works. It's that not said, actually a toggle. It actually moves. That said, it does work well. Yeah, you, you would think you hit a button here and pull it back like most other manufacturers. There's actually a button up here, and then you just put it in the gear you want. So it physically moves, but it doesn't. somehow it doesn't feel intuitive. It's actually understand. simple. Yeah. Um, just don't it seem so unnecessary. Like, right. and, when you're, and when you're doing your cruising thing like you it's too low you can't do the you know you can't bro out thing. yeah you yeah. can't bro out this is a gauge closer that is nice look you can program it you can put all the things you want in there you get all the modes all the different goodies that's really great yeah all right Brian, unlike the mustang gt we recently had um the dark horse it was buried in the menus not over here we got an actual button you just hit the button you hit the exhaust mode you want and you just leave it gosh so great we uh as brian mentioned earlier we leave it in quiet mode only 
Um, so there's that. Moving on to here, Brian. This is wonderful. This is in every Ranger, even yeah. in the Raptor. Bravo. Same deal. And then, Brian, I need to know off-road lockers. Where are all those locker buttons you keep talking about? I don't see anything here. Well, you've got your drive modes here. Um, this scrolls for drive modes. Yep, you got that. You got transfer case settings around right here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For, Trailer, uh, for auto. Right. What? What? Where's the locker button? You hit this button. And, Brian, look at this. Give it a minute. Get, get, get it a minute. Okay, there, there we go. Is. We get a rear locker and a front locker. That is really cool. I will say, just give us a button next time that would solve that whole yeah. waiting problem, but yeah. it's okay. It works. It's you, fine. You know what you could do is you can move in the park assist and whatever the, the traction button, put that in here. Uh, a couple things we missed, Craig. We got glove box and we've got Land Rover style glove box. Double barrel, buddy. Love it. Let's see how fast it goes. Let's go. All right, Brian, that should be faster than the Bronco Raptor because it's got smaller tires that should mm -hmm. help the launch. You would think. You would think. It's got the same power plant. Hit it. Okay. It makes a bunch of noise. There's 60. Okay, oh, now, hold okay. on. Hold on. You get a lot of scrub there. Yeah, well, first of all, I was trying something different there. Yeah, that yeah. was two-wheel drive. Not really fair, right. Turns out, not the best move. Now, without you in the car, the best I saw with sport mode, four auto, traction off, which is what we did in the Bronco Raptor, 6.2 seconds. 6.2, really good. Hang on, I'll get to the Bronco Raptor. Okay, okay, okay. 6.2, really good. We just tested the four cylinder. Oh, it was 6.9. 6.9, so this not, is faster. It is, but not like that much faster. Keep in mind, real world testing, 96 degrees, middle of the day in Texas summer. Good point, good point. And this Car and driver will do, we'll do better. Yeah, yeah. Right, uh, exactly. Sure. The Bronco Raptor we had it, Brian, on the same kind of surface, 5.73 with 37s. How was that happening? What is going on? Maybe because it's broken in. Maybe Is Ford's... their final gear ratio difference? No, they're both 410s. I wonder if Ford sent us a ringer that day because that thing ripped it and it felt faster than us for sure. It did. Okay, well, we got that out of the way. Okay. Let's talk about ride and drive. We have coil suspension Yep. with the Watts Link. Explain the Watts Link. Okay, so for those who don't know, Watts Link is an alternative to a panhard bar or a track bar. So a track bar will take on a coil spring live axle vehicle. It'll be connected at the axle on one end, the body on the other end, and it aligns the axle with the frame of the car. A Watts Link uses a bindle in the middle and two track bars going out. The suspension, as it compresses, the axle will shift left and right slightly. Well, and let's get back to what the Raptor's mission is. It's desert Baja. Speed. Yeah, Baja. It, it's Baja, desert baby. running at speed, and that speaks to all that, right? Right. Like, it's just, there's no change there. Is this a better off-road than the Bronco Raptor? I, this, I, I'd say no. This is $20,000 cheaper, though. It, and that that's not nothing. That's a big difference. So my biggest complaint here are two things, and the Bronco's the same problem. Can't get ventilated seats, and you're stuck with this vinyl they call leather. Yeah. In Texas summers, that's just really hard. It's that's just, all. Oh, I'm sweating like crazy right now. Right. Yeah. Secondly, with a smaller, much lighter wheel and tire package, this should be faster than the Bronco Raptor is. Yeah. And that's a little frustrating, and it's not only just expectations, but it's also just the physics. It should be that way. Yeah. Now, where it's a winner is everything else in this segment will not ride and drive as well as this does. That's true. The suspension is live valve, and in live valve is just, I'm sorry, it's just the pinnacle of off-road suspension from the factory today. It, it truly is. And what this has over the Bronco Raptor, I don't care what Bronco spec you get, there's not a lot of road noise in this. This is a this quiet, comfortable vehicle. Yeah, so it's the got radar a, cruise control. Right. It's got uh, a roof, dude. It's got, the, you know, the dual zone climate control. I mean, like, it works. this really is a well. very yeah. practical vehicle. Well, and yes, $58,000 is a lot. Right. But Brian, you start comparing that to mid-size, mid-level spec trucks, like a, a Tundra mid-spec, a F-150 mid-spec, mid-50s to mid-60s. This is right, right there. Right. And it's got all the off-road goodies. It, and it's the top tier. Yeah. You know, of, of the lineup. Anything else top tier is going to be, well, for example, the TRD Pro from Tacoma, which does not have live valve, has static Fox shocks, right. is $10,000 more than this. And I highly doubt it's better than this with the mission this has. I just, don't, I just don't believe that it is. We haven't driven it yet. I'm sure it's great. I'm looking forward to driving it, but I bet in terms of what the Baja race thing is, Toyota's purposely not targeting this. A lot of people have said this is the best Raptor ever, a lot of media, because it kind of split the difference in a lot of things, and the practicality and all those things. That's true. In your opinion, is this the best Raptor ever? No. Why not? The Raptor R exists. Oh, the Raptor R. Yeah. And I would go to the Bronco Raptor. That's where I'm at. I'm Fair. a Raptor guy. You're a Raptor and R guy. Yeah. What kind of guy are you? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, there's a lot of choices now, and I'm just glad Ford gave us another one. Absolutely. See you next time.